Welcome back to another video. Today is day two on Moritai. Today we are going to two different caves. The first cave is not too far of a distance from what we are told, and it's a bit natural, I guess. Supposedly there's bats and birds, so I'm gonna be looking for wildlife just as much I'm going to be looking for World War II artifacts. Mr. Moulis is putting the metal detector to work. He's checking this route right here, this little trail. We already found a couple little small things, but we'll show you guys later what that's all about. The second cave is going to be quite interesting. We brought our free diving gear, our fins, mass snorkel, because there's some submerged treasures. I don't want to say treasure, but there's some artifacts, probably some metal boxes and things that are underwater. So we're going to try to recover some of that stuff. But that is it, you guys. Let's go. I'm really excited. Whenever we uh, have the chance to see snakes and then this World War II stuff is really mind blowing. So let's go. So here's one of the beginning of the artifacts that we're finding. This is, looks to be like, of the period, a World War II bottle. I think it's root beer actually based on the RBR here, but it says on the side, it says, property of Richmond and Brewing Company. And it's a very thick glass. I feel like the bottles of these days, they don't, uh, they don't use this old amber and thick glass, but uh, this definitely looks of the period. I mean, why were there, would there be a, a beverage bottle from Richmond, Virginia, or wherever this is from? But um, anyway, this stuff is everywhere. We didn't find this with the metal detector. Of course, this was just face down in the mud here. So, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so Apple went down into the cave and she found a bunch of stuff. We're not 100% sure what all this is. This looks like it has something to do with electricity, maybe something that wires and things to conduct electricity would be wrapped around. We will clean this off and try to read it. It looks like it goes this one. Federal mid... Mm, I can't read it. But we'll clean it and these are probably medicine bottles uh, i don't think they're perfume federal midget federal midget yeah okay Ele electricity some thing. sort of electri electric component okay. and what is this uh mr mullis what is this one yes yeah. what is this one uh, you know? oh this is like the primer from a from around all from the gun yeah it's a oh, primer the gun. okay and it's already been fired the primer's already punched yeah. And those, probably be. medicine. Yeah, yeah medicine bottle. Yeah. Medicine or some. Wow, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff around here. Yeah.
Okay, we are at the second spot. We are walking to the cave and we have all of our diving stuff with us, our free diving stuff. So this is gonna be interesting. It, we got rained out. So we're all kind of soaking wet, but we're starting to warm up now. I know the water inside that cave is gonna be freezing cold. It's gonna feel like Southern California or worse, but I think we're gonna do it. We will allow adrenaline to fuel us. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not bring the headlamps, they're in the back. Oh. So I have two lights, but not those. We have made it to cave number two. We are going to be going down here, and there is very clear water down at the bottom. And these guys see a metal box, and I was also told that there's more boxes in a line. Have no idea what's in them, and we're going to assume that this wasn't always uh, submerged. It was probably a dry cave at some point. Because 1944, you know, roughly, that's a long, long time ago, so a lot of things changed. So now it's filled with water, but the water is crystal clear. It's probably going to be really cold. I haven't felt it yet, but uh, somewhere between three and five meters. So me and my partner, Denny, we are going to try to free dive. I have GoPro and a light, and I'm going to film while we're doing it. We have a rope in case the box is super heavy. Uh, we may have to come up and like manually pull it up. So I don't know. We'll see how this goes. We just look. of interesting I never thought that I would be doing something like this but the water wasn't as cold as what I thought so that was pretty cool there are multiple wooden barrels and boxes in here and they're very fragile so when we touch them they just break apart and there's some kind of yellow like 
fluid or something, some kind of yellow debris that's coming out of there. It's probably not good for us. So that's about it for us today. It could be absolutely anything after being underwater for that amount of time. Have no idea. Fuel, explosives, flour for cooking, sulfur for stopping bleeding for the medical staff or whatever. All kinds of stuff that it could be. But anyway, that is it. Another adventure comes to an end. <laughs> so the cave adventure is over. We have stopped for lunch. We are in the local town or whatever. So just having some local food. And I think today is just gonna be like a half day adventure. That was kind of a lot <laughs> in a short amount of time. It's still just a few minutes before noon. So we packed a lot in between like uh, eight and 12. So like four hours, those two caves and all that. So anyway, that's what's going on. I'll show you the food when it gets here. So the lunch has been served. Apple has a grilled fish. I have chicken with oyster sauce. This is water spinach with garlic. And we have white rice, of course. And this is sambal. It looks very, very spicy, but I'm sure it's very good. So we will go easy on that. And that is it. That's what's for lunch, you guys. This is basically how we eat along the way. Lots of fish, lots of chicken, and lots of rice, of course. But uh, it's good stuff. So thank you so much, okay. Terry Makasi. Yes, I'm yes. Enjoy the enjoy the metal detector. I know you're going to be busy. We left him extra batteries, and if he finds anything interesting, please communicate that to me. <laughs> Dia bilang terima kasih yeah. untuk semua. Dia bilang selamat menikmati untuk bisa pakai metal detector. Kalau ada yeah. sesuatu yang menarik, boleh kasih tahu dia lewat saya. Siap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you again. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mullis. Thank you. So our day has come to an end. This is going to conclude our time with Mr. Mullis. But I feel like this video would not be complete without just a quick little walkthrough tour of his private museum. If you want to see a more detailed look at the museum, I will put a link to the video up here in the corner from the last time that we were here. But I just want you guys to see the array of things that he is finding in the jungle and now that he has a metal detector that we are leaving with him he's going to be a very busy man so if you just take a look in here there are many many things there's morphine medicine there are cigarette lighters dog tags from all the different coalition forces lots of pennies and coins from all over the world we looked at some of them in detail before. We feel like those are good luck charms because they were even predating World War II by a lot. So I think those were just like lucky coins and things. There's even some like medals and ranking and all kinds of crazy stuff, just a lot. Bottles from wine and beer, um, even handguns. And in the other room here, you'll see some rifles and some really big rifles. Here in this case, these are all utensils most of them have a soldier's name engraved on it, which is actually really, really touching. And when you come in here, this is all kinds of cartridges and shells and hand grenades, all kinds of crazy stuff, tons of stuff. Looks like bayonets here. On the other side, there's bottles and machine guns here. Lots of ammunition, tools and shovels and machetes and maybe even samurai swords because it's Japanese. So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. You keep moving over here, helmets and just all kinds of things. Just crazy amount of stuff. Lots of ammunition over here. This is um, like ceramic, like coffee mugs and different things. So it's really amazing. So if this interests you, if you do ever happen to make your way all the way to Moratai, 
I highly suggest visiting this place. If you have any questions about it, where it is, how to get here, even any questions about diving and the whole bit, just send me a message and I will be happy to direct you to some of our contacts here. It seems like we're very well connected at this point because I'm like, I, I, right now I feel like I'm the only foreigner on this island. <laughs> so we didn't see any other uh, foreigners on the plane or anything like that. Apple actually is a foreigner as well because she's Thai. But anyway, amazing time. Tomorrow is a diving day, but it's still going to have a little bit of a World War II theme because we are going to be checking out some sunken uh, Jeeps and planes and different things like that. So it should be really amazing. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.